Hello and welcome to part 8. Uh, this is a re-recording of this episode as uh, Unity have modified their prefab system which has meant a whole raft of changes to UMA. So I'm currently working on the uh, release candidate for UMA 2.8. Uh, this isn't on the asset store at the time I recorded this but you can pick this up from the uh, GitHub uh, repository for UMA. Um, I'll leave the link down below. Um, but what this basically means is we have now have a new DNA system which is going to make life a whole lot easier and uh, it's going to work with future versions of Unity. So in this episode we're going to have a look at creating some DNA for our DAS character. Um, this DNA is going to move bones, it's going to change the blend shapes, and it's also going to change the colour. And thankfully, it's a lot simpler than it used to be. So, let's get cracking. So the first thing I'm going to do to make uh, my life a whole lot easier is to quickly go into my dynamic character avatar, into the race animation controllers, and I'm just going to delete this animation controller so that when I run I get an unanimated UMA and the reason I'm doing that is so that I can have a look through this bone structure and see what I want to mess around with so um, this is obviously the DAS bone structure and I'm hunting for these two bones here so the collar bones what I'm wanting to do is create a single slider that makes my character more of a beefcake than he is at the moment um, so the first thing I want to do, I want to actually move the bones of the shoulders out just to give him a bit more breadth. Um, so it's these two collar bones I'm after. And the reason I've stopped the animator is with the animator on, I can't actually move these bones. If I don't have an animator, I can fiddle with these to my heart's content. So um, if I look at the, the right collar bone, which is this one, um, let's have a look what we want to do. There's X, Y, and Z movement. We could put rotation on as well we could scale as well but I won't actually move these bones out and we can move them just by sliding here and you can see that's the movement I want so it's the x-axis I want to move and if we look to move that out I need to be adding so if I add to that x-axis that moves the shoulder out okay that's great if I go to the other side then I've got a feeling it's going to be the same axis, but I reckon I want to subtract from that. So let's subtract. Yeah, and that moves that one out. So the left collar subtracting X will move out. The right collar adding to X will move out. Great, that's what I wanted to know. Let's just rerun that to reset his pause. That was great. So um, let's create some of the things we need. So I'm going to go into uh, my UMA folder and create um, a new one, and we'll call this DNA. So this is where we're going to store our our stuff, and we need to create two new assets in here. So first of all, I need a UMA DNA dynamic DNA asset. Um, this, if I rename it to G8M. Dynamic Yuma DNA asset. This contains a list of all of the DNA names, so head size, leg length, whatever. Okay, so we've got that created, and the next asset we're going to need is to create an Uma DNA, and we want a DNA converter controller, not the behavior. Okay, we want this converter controller. Behavior is the, the old version. So let's use this new one, the controller. And again, I'm going to rename that G8M. Okay, great. Now we need to hook all of these together. So first of all, let's put our... You'll see the converter controller needs the dynamic DNA asset. So let's connect that into here. Okay. Uh, and also we need to reference this in our recipe. So let's head over to our base recipe. Um, have a look. Oh no, it's not. It's the race data. Let's head over to our race data. And you'll see here a DNA converter list. If I drop this down, in fact, let's just stop so we've got some slightly nicer colors. I need to drag my converter controller into here. 
So I'll pop that in there. There we go. So our converter control is hooked up to our race data and our DNA asset is hooked up to our controller. Great, so that's all wired together. We can start putting stuff into it. Um, so first, let's create some DNA. So if we go to our DNA asset, we'll create um, a DNA slider called buff. So this will make our character more buff as we slide it up and down. Uh, let's run. And if we have a look at our character, you can see we now have this buff slider. It doesn't do anything at the moment, but there it is, ready to go. So uh, while we're running, let's add some adjustments to this DNA slider. Okay, so let's head into our converter controller. And this is where all the magic happens. Um, there's an overall modifiers here, which I'm just going to collapse because I don't want to look at that at the moment. Um, but what I'm interested in is this converter list. Now at the moment, there's no converters, but these are the things that convert slider movements into actual changes on your character. Um, and there's a few of them we can create. So you can see the list's empty. If I hit this add converters drop down, there's a blend shape converter for um, adjusting your morphs. There is a bone pose converter. Um, this is for doing overall changes, so a collection of bones all moving at once. I'm not going to touch that for the moment. Um, there's a colour converter for modifying colours with a slider. Um, overall scale for obviously shrinking or um, increasing the size of your Uma with a slider. And there is also a skeleton DNA, and this is the one I'm going to use first. This allows you to move individual bones with a slider. Okay, so I'm going to pop one of these in. And I'm just going to hit add. So there we are. We've got a skeleton DNA converter. If I drop this down, you can see all the converters. There's a list that's empty, but we need to add bones to this converter list. So if we remember in our hierarchy, let's have a look. It was the two collar bones that I wanted to mess with. Let's have a look in here. So um, first of all, let's try this right collar. So I'm going to add R. Uh, Collar, and what I want to adjust is its position. Again, if I drop this down, you can see we can adjust rotation and scale as well. But we want to move the X position. Let's add. Uh, so when we do that, we get this little fella here, and you can see we can pick which axis we want to mess with. So I'm going to mess with the X value, and this is a list of DNA that's going to adjust the X value of our bone. So let's add an adjuster. So it's possible to add different DNA here that will do different things to that bone. Uh, but we're just going to do one at the moment. So I'm going to say the buff slider. Um, and we said with the right color adding to our X value moved it out, didn't it? That was what we wanted. So I am going to uh, say, yeah, that's it. At the moment, we've got this evaluator here, which as I slide up my slider, We'll move our value up. Um, this should just work. So let's try this. Let's head back to our character. Let's move the buff slider. And there you go, it is. So as I go up, it's moving the character's arm out. It's stopping so far. And when I go down, it moves it in, which I don't like at all. And again, it's stopping after so much distance. So let's just correct this. If I head back over to um, the converter controller and drop it down, first of all, the reason it's stopping are these limits. So these are hard limits on um, how I want the object to move. So I can actually say, um, I don't want this to move in a negative direction at all. I don't want this bone to move into the body. So if I hard limit that to zero and we try again, we should see now it will go out when I slide up, but it won't go into the body as I slide down. Okay, so that's what your limits do. Um, that point one is stopping it here. So it's moving point one in world units and it's stopping. So let's go back and adjust this a little more. I think that's way too powerful. I actually want that only to move. Um, let's scale that down. Let's multiply it by 0.05 because I want this to be quite subtle. So let's have a look again at my slider, and we should see now 
there we go so it's moving out a reasonable amount there it's something visible but it's not crazy brilliant that's exactly what I want okay so uh, let's do the same for the other shoulder so I'm going to add uh, another um, adjuster here this time it's going to be for L collar and again position is fine I want to be in the X position this time if you remember it went the other way so it was a negative that actually moved that out so I'm going to stop it being positive I'm going to add my buff DNA and I'm actually going to invert so you can see this list here of evaluators lots of different ones we'll have a look at those in a moment but I'm going to use instead of default I'm going to use default inverted so this is as I go up on my slider it's actually going to give me a negative value which is what I want that's going to move this out uh, and again let's just put this multiplier in to stop it going crazy so back to my DNA let's move it and that's both shoulders going that's superb brilliant let's just have a look out in the scene view yep okay so that's my first set of DNA created so next let's make use of these morphs that we have added to our character so if I head over to the Uma renderer um, we can see the list of morphs oh and this is one of the reasons why it might be nice to tidy up your morph names I've got to remember all of this so I want this bodybuilder size morph here let's just slide that up I want to have our buff actually affect that as well so it's going to move the shoulders out and add that morph to our character so let's just zero that and try and remember this name so genesis 8 male underscore underscore FPM bodybuilders, I'm sure I can remember that. I must have slightly longer memory than a goldfish. So I'm going to add a new converter on top of this skeleton one. I'm going to add a blend shape converter. Click add. And in here we're going to add a new adjuster. So the blend shape I need to apply, it was uh, Genesis 8 male underscore underscore full body morph um, body builder size we will quickly find out if I've got that wrong um, so the DNA wants to be again this buff slider um, but this time I want to have a quick look at this evaluator here um, at the moment by default zero if we have a look at them in here you can probably see them a little bit better zero is when the slider is in the middle um, at the top it will be 0.5 and at the bottom it will be minus 0.5 okay it's the same with this default inverted but obviously the other way around so at the bottom of the slider we'll get a positive 0.5 and a negative 0.5 at the top so these are really quite useful um, default one will actually give us one at the top a negative one at the bottom what I'm wanting I don't want the bottom half of the slider to do anything so down here I've got one that's zero zero one so they're, they're quite good they do explain themselves once you get the idea of what's going on so I'm going to pick zero zero one so if I head over to my character let's try this out if I slide the slider up his shoulders separate and he gets that blend shape applied to him as well so again you don't have to do them all on a single slider but I'm just being a bit clever here to show you how easy it is to do that okay so this buff slide is looking great one last thing I want to do um, as we know with all bodybuilders the more muscles you have the more fake tan you need to have on as well so let's do a little color correction so again back to our DNA and I'm going to add a color converter let's add that okay if we open it up um, I'm going to add a new converter uh, ah right before I do this I need to just change something so let's just delete that so very easy from this little wheel let's just delete that and before I do the colors let's just stop and we need to modify our recipe if you've been following along 
So if we go back to our base recipe and look at our slots, what we could do with here is adding a shared color. Now a shared color is something that you can modify um, and you can change and will affect several different overlays. So let's add a shared color and we'll call this one uh, skin. We won't change it, we'll leave it white. So this is going to tint um, our skin overlays. So in here, I'm going to go through, let's just collapse all. I'm going to go through all of the skin items and just say use shared color. And you can see it's picked the first one on the list. So that's great for the face, not for the eyes, not for the mouth, but the torso, I want it on there. I want the shared color used on the arms and I want the shared color used on the legs. Okay, great. All this does, let's just run and show this without any DNA attached. All this does is if I'm in here, you can see I have uh, character colors. And in here you can see skin. If I fiddle with my skin color, it will change the overall skin color of my character now. Okay, so that's all we've done with that. Let's just rerun that. So plain color again. Right, so now let's attach that. Let's hook that shared color up to some DNA. So back into here, we'll try again. Add a color converter. Okay, in here let's add a new reference and we're gonna say the mode wants to be shared color. And our shared color was called skin. And down here we can say the DNA that we want to use is this buff. And again, I don't want it to do anything on the bottom half of the slider and I want its full effect on the top half. So I'm gonna use this zero, zero, one. I want it to affect the red, green and blue. And this can be a little bit confusing, but what I'm gonna do down here, I'm gonna, this is a slider where we can see what will happen. So at the moment, this will, as I move that slider up, it will multiply my DNA or adjust my color to zero. So you can see as I move the slider, it will gradually go black. Um, okay, I don't really want that. What I want, I'm gonna add a color up here. I want a bit more, some more red, a little bit of green, a little bit of blue. Let's get a flesh tone there, there we go. So as we move the slider up, you can see I get this tan color. Okay, so this is the effect we're gonna get. So let's try it, let's head back to our avatar. And what we should see is as we add muscle, we add more fake tan to the character. Brilliant. So what you should see, if you've ever used the DNA before, on an Uma. Um, it used to be quite tricky, but now this simple setup allows you to make a single slider do anything. Um, I'm also reliably informed that you can write your own converters to do all manner of different things. It's a bit beyond what I know yet, but uh, hopefully what you've learned there will allow you to do all sorts of modifications to your characters. So I hope you enjoy that, and uh, I will see you next time. And once again, I'd like to say a big thank you to my patrons for making this possible. Uh, if you would like to support me, feel free to click that link at the end of the video. Thank you very much, and I'll see you next time.